Last one to finish is a pointy-eared leaf lover. Welcome back, everyone. This is episode nine of the How to Paint Deep Rock Galactic. This is for the board game miniatures. This episode, I dive into a few variations of the Glyphid Menace. A few photos from the end game show a fairly bright blue-green theme. I kind of took that and ran with it while focusing on Army Painter Speed Paints primarily for the colors. I started out by doing some dry brushing to bring the white up on the sides and bases of the models. They were already hit pretty heavy on the top from a white primer with a Xenothal Prime. I really wanted those back scales to pop when I put the colors on because that's kind of the highlight point on this particular model, it seems like, the main focus area. I'll break this video into two sections based on each paint job, uh, much like I did with the Grunt Slashers in Episode 8. And I apologize, I ran into some corrupted video for the first time on the legs on this first menace. So you do miss me painting in the underbelly and legs with just a pure cloudburst blue speed paint. I apply plasmatic bolt over the dried cloudburst legs those side domes, mouth, and the neck area. come back with the cloudburst blue and coat over the neck. I think I was trying to just blend the two colors because I come back again later and go over it with a different color again. I also hit the back of the mouth in the center with the cloudburst. Army Painter War Paints Matte White to highlight up the neck ridges and the leg peaks. scales on the first menace I go with a high lowered blue cut with speed paint medium about a two to one ratio Once this is dried, I come back and do some more white dry brushing to highlight up those edges of the plates on the back. I want those to be good and crisp 
to pick up the speed paint highlighting. Side note, I found some discussions lately about using cardboard over paper towels to clean off that extra paint while you're dry brushing. The paper towels problem being they suck up too much moisture from your paint and brush when you you know, dab it off on there before you dry brush. So uh, I have to say, I think the cardboard's working a little better for me. So something to try if you haven't. Chop one of them Amazon boxes up. After the back dry brushing dries, I go over it with plasmatic bolt. Highlights along the edges of the plates will pop with the pure plasmatic color. And then the rest of it acts as a glaze over the high lowered on the back to kind of blend the two colors together. I also hit the neck and the mouth again with plasmatic bolt and go over the white highlights on the legs with it. Gravelord Grey on the rock underneath him. I choose Pallet Bone for the teeth. Back highlights are a mix of Army Painter Griffin Blue with a matte white paint. I just try to bring it up to a really light blue color with the white. I try to hit all those sharp edges on the back plates, but without covering that plasmatic bolt highlight I just did. Just the side of the brush, hit those really sharp edges just to make them pop out a little more again. I use blue colored wash on the bottom half of the model to help blend in things. I used a custom wash in this case, my standard less wash type recipe. Uh, well, I think it was Dollar Rowney Indigo Ink was probably what I based my blue one off of. If you have something like the Army Painter Blue Tone or you know, thin down a normal blue uh, paint, you could do the same effect though. So for Menace number two, I played with a slightly different color palette, but I did stick to the blue theme overall. I started by mixing in some water with a little cloudburst speed paint to create a, a wash to shade in the cracks of the lower body and the back of the mouth. come back with matte white 
to hit the pattern on the side of those sacks on the domes and the mouth and the teeth. For the back, I played with a combination of Cloudburst, a High Lord, and some Speed Paint Medium. So it was probably about one to one on the High Lord to Cloudburst, and probably two parts, two drops of the uh, medium. I wanted the blue somewhere between those two colors. Once dry, I followed that up with some matte white dry brushing on the back. Similar to the Menace number one, plasmatic bolt across the back once it was dry. I also hit the mouth with that color as well. I created a glaze from a drop of fluorescent blue Dalarowney acrylic ink and a drop of the Vallejo glaze medium. So one to one mix. I wanted to hit those side sacks and mouth just to give them a little, uh, a little more blue, a little more character. Gravelord Gray both on the rock under him and the underside of the rear end and the underside of the body just for some different shading effects. You can also hit those insides of the small legs where it's got all those divots just to put some shading into there with it. Once dry, I hit the throat and the rear end underside with Fire Giant Orange Army Painter Speed Paint. For the teeth and those backplate edge highlights, I went with Pallid Bone Army Painter Speed Paint. It actually had a pretty cool effect, I thought, on the back side where it hit those uh, edges of the back plates.
And finally, the legs in this guy, basically the same colors as the back. It's a cloudburst plus high lord plus medium mix. Nicely done, Miner. Assignment completed. And here are my two finished menaces. I do think I lean towards the one I did second with the orange underside highlights. Um, and those pallet bone highlights on the back side. Those give it a little more character. Definitely kind of popped a little more from that looking down from the table distance when I was doing some testing. Here are some various shots of the two individually as well. Side note, I did create a Discord server for Hopeless Hobby Addict. I will post the link below in the description for the server in case you want to hop on, say hi, post a picture, uh, you know, whatever. I'm usually around in the evenings once the house gets quiet after 9.30 Pacific time, so I'll try to check it throughout the week and pop in and uh, respond to messages if you happen to go in there. And a quick sneak peek for the next episode. I think we're going to be doing just the Exploder. I only had one of those models print correctly off the resin printer, so I had to make a good attempt at it on the first run to avoid repriming and starting over. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. Like and subscribe if you want to stay uh, in the loop. And I'll see you next time.